This is the first episode of uh, Roundtable. Uh, Roundtable is going to be a new show, monthly release, ideally, um, where we're going to address questions and comments from the YouTube channel. So uh, we've done this a few times. Um, this will be the first official Roundtable episode, but uh, we've done Q&A sessions before. Um, I had mentioned during those that we might go to a more formalized structure um, just so I can kind of stay on top of things and thus... This is what I've come up with. If you have any suggestions or a different approach to this um, or maybe a different title, um, I'm certainly open to hearing those. Uh, I went back and forth with a couple different ideas. Um, Roundup was one of them. Um, Town Square uh, was another one kind of staying with the theme of the villages. And I was like, no, this is really more of like a, a round table discussion type situation. So... Without further ado, let's jump in here. You'll probably recognize this is the uh, back end of the YouTube channel here. This is where all the comments are stored. I do not respond to comments in writing. Um, I just don't have time to type all that out. Uh, this is a much easier way for me to uh, respond to these. So if you are leaving questions in or comments on the YouTube channel, um, just understand I will address them, but it's probably going to be once a month. Okay, uh, My schedule is getting very tight. Uh, as it is uh, with the YouTube channel here. So let's jump right in. Uh, William McGowan, 9971, wants to kick me right in the teeth right out the gate, which is fine. It's how I like to start my day. It's all uphill from here, or all downhill from here. Uh, too hard to watch. Meandering talk track, just not that interesting. Uh, what are your qualifications to speak on these items? And this comment comes off of the episode 7, Living the Dream Costs What?, uh, which featured Mr. Gary Abbott as we were talking about the challenges around estimations on cost of living. Um, <clears throat> so this actually presents us with a unique opportunity, right? My wife has been on me to shoot a new profile video, um, and now I see why that's so necessary. Uh, so to answer this question, what are my qualifications? Well, uh, Mr. McGowan, yes, McGowan, or Mrs. McGowan, I'm not sure. Um, although it says will, it's probably Mr. Um, my qualifications pretty much fall in line with anybody and everybody else who's doing a YouTube video on the topic. Uh, I live in the area. I've lived in the area probably longer than all the other YouTubers discussing the matter have lived in the area combined. Um, say Mr. Ira Miller. Mr. Ira Miller is a legend um, and has been here a very long time. Um, but aside from that, <clears throat> I live in the area. Now, beyond that, uh, I have done probably, quick math, three, 350 estimates, right? Um, over the course of my career, I've probably distributed thousands, um, but I've drafted at least three, 350 uh, estimated cost of livings and because I do each one on a per individual home. So every one of my customers gets one and I've had hundreds. Uh, almost every one of my open houses gets one um, with a few exceptions. Um, so it's, it's really something that I do on a nearly daily basis. Um, and so I have a lot of familiarity with it. Um, obviously, I've done a fair amount of research. Uh, to make sure that I'm, if not accurate, overstating the cost, uh, as I mentioned in the video. I get the sense that you probably didn't finish the video because I did address a lot of this stuff in that video. Um, why I'm coming up with this, how I arrived there, what I do with this information. Um, but apparently I was meandering, meandering, meandering. Okay, so just extensive talking. Got it. Yeah, I meander. That's that's me. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Meandering. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> well, immediately, I got something in my throat. Jesus. All right, here we go. Uh, Nightingale, 2123. Nightingale's been on here a few times. Thank you, Nightingale. 
Uh, my husband and I cash purchased a new three bedroom courtyard in the village of St. John's uh, in 2022. We have 32,400 bond. Yes. So I read through this um, when it first came on and then a few folks jumped in there and thanked them uh, for sharing. And I'll thank them as well for sharing. Um, you know, that's one of the challenges with cost of living is that we are going to start to dive into some personal uh, information there, things that people tend to want to keep private. Um, I will say this, if you get a chance to read through this, I did read through it. It, it seems very much in line with what I would expect given uh, their circumstances, their location, um, the size of their household, so on and so forth. So uh, feel free if you want to get a, a fairly good idea of what the cost of living is in the southern sections uh, with a similar uh, setup, this is a good example. Um, then we go on to have Brian Engelhart, Hearted. 7077, thank them. Uh, thank you very much for sharing. I know finance is a very personal topic and some like to keep it very close to them and it's not going into too much detail, but posts like this are very helpful for us uh, soon to be villagers. Yeah, um, information, you know, despite what you might think, uh, information is not always readily available. And the information that is readily available, and part of the reason I like to do Real Order Reacts is some of that information is either put out in the service of the idea of providing you with information without actually being of any real value. And that kind of that kind of was the underlying theme of that episode, right? We have this we have this cost of living analysis that's very generic and generalized and thus not very useful because there's so much variation in what could occur in your circumstances in that particular home and its home site, um, the county by which it resides in, uh, that you really need to have a specific cost of living analysis to come even close. Um, and that was really the point of that episode. Let me get in here real quick. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Uh, Nightingale goes on, and I think this is also on the same episode. He's just replying to um, Mr. Engelhart here. Uh, she spent five years researching the villages, COL, I'm not sure what that means, and all other issues related to relocation to Florida and retirement, in retirement, which was very far from his family, friends, doctors, uh, before determining that, could, that not only could we afford to live in the villages, but we could have all our retirement needs met. Uh, in this community, although it, is, it has been only a year living in the villages, right? And so this kind of goes back to qualifications. When I'm looking at the landscape of content creators, <coughs> save, save probably Jerry and Linda. Um, and Robin, obviously, is a, is a realtor herself. Um, I've got folks who are relatively new to the community. Um, and they don't have kind of the long view. And, and I think I mentioned this in the video, right? When we, when we don't have the formal education, which a lot of folks aren't going to stop to get, we, we wind up with impressions and assumptions, right? And so I spend a lot of time correcting for a lot of these things. And, and the reason it's important to do that is because we're basing decisions on these assumptions and we're basing decisions on these impressions. And then what winds up happening is, is that four to five years down the line, I get a phone call and it's a mess. And now I've got to try and figure out how to salvage this situation so that the customer in front of me doesn't, doesn't take a bath, right? On the sale of their home. Um, Cause it just wasn't set up properly. And there were things that they just weren't told. Um, and that's kind of, that's just kind of, they don't know to ask the questions. They don't know what questions to ask to get the information. So <clears throat> that's more or less what we try to accomplish here on this channel is, is kind of myth busting, if you will, uh, to a certain extent, uh, do, 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 come dear friends. And we have a lot of, yeah. So basically he's just, he, he's just sharing that they did their research. They did their homework. They invested time. And, you know, this is going to come back to, well, how much time do you need to invest in doing your research and visiting and, 
and moving around and forming an impression and opinions before you actually make a decision. That answer changes for everybody. Um, I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you are somewhat familiar with the villages. Possibly you visited, possibly you're considering a move here. Um, you could come down. I, I've had folks who have, who have come down every year for 10 years and they'll probably never buy. Uh, they'll probably never become residents. Um, I've had folks who buy on their first visit, right? And the whole internet just blew up. What? Yeah, no, it happens. It happens more than you think. Um, because they fall in love with the villages as soon as they encounter it, right? It's an emotional purchase. That's, that's why that tends to happen. This group also tends to be the group that I have to spend a lot of time educating post-purchase um, and, and trying to hopefully they somehow fell backwards into a good scenario, but that's not always the case. Oftentimes it's not the case. Um, let's continue on. Thank you. Very helpful. That was in re uh, reply to uh, the cost of living layout there. Our cold dad. Thank you for sharing details of your experience, uh, expenses in the villages, especially the home car insurance amounts. Some other village videos shows include similar cost ranges aside from any mortgage costs. I expect 2000. What is this? 2000, 3000 per month would cover most items for an active or a couple. Two thousand might be a little shallow. Three thousand would probably be overkill, and and again, that's you know, it's really going to come down to the specifics, and and so you could probably you could probably save. I would bump that up to like twenty four hundred to thirty two hundred. Our cold that, um, and you probably be in a safer range uh, for if you just want to if you just want to do a range, um, you'd probably be safer with that assumption okay our cold dad our old friend tom all right here we go uh real to reacts episode eight getting your priorities straight this was robin's video if i remember correctly okay you mentioned sectors three four five six etc i think you mentioned that term on an earlier video i have not otherwise seen or heard them heard the term sector uh, used about the villages. Is sectors the same as CBD district or does sectors mean something else that you can explain? If the villages sector map, please let me know where and how I can find it. Okay, so this is my fault, Um <clears throat> About 12 years ago, it probably would have been roughly 12 years ago, um, I had developed the early education guide. I had actually authored it in an afternoon, really. Um, and in that authoring of that lit that piece of literature, which is something that I use to build rapport and educate my customers um, prior to making a purchase, I had developed the sector system. Um, why I developed the sector system was essentially because I, you have to understand, I started in this industry prior to GPS. Okay. We had garments, we had, you had to purchase an individual display monitor that had a monthly service charge. This is before Google maps really had become established. Um, and even there, they weren't terribly accurate. The GPS, the satellite network wasn't really as robust as it is today. So. I had to manually learn <clears throat> how to navigate the villages, right? We all learned to some degree or another how to navigate our spaces, but the villages was a big place and is only getting bigger. Um, and so I had to devise a way to uh, navigate it without looking at a map when I have folks in the car and without using my GPS because it wasn't reliable. I developed the sector system and I developed it initially as a navigational because I navigate by, by visual. I navigate by um, landmarks, <clears throat> but that wouldn't work in the villages because a lot of things are very samey. So the other side of that was <clears throat> we had different errors of construction and each error was somewhat distinct and had different models. Um, there were different approaches 
approaches in the marketplace. And what I mean by that is we went from custom building to predominantly spec building. Um, and then there were other economical elements that kind of fluctuated and shifted the way the developer approached developing the community. And that left, that left residue. It left aspects that were easily definable in a space. And so the sector system basically became a way for me to identify spaces, times of construction, different errors um, geographically, okay? There is no map. I, I designed it for my own understanding and I use it to educate my customers when they're purchasing a home. Basically, it's like, you know, sector one has these characteristics, sector two has these characteristics, sector three has these characteristics, so on and so forth through all seven sectors. Um, I've added two sectors here recently, seven and six, right? And I try and I tried, I, I really redesigned it to, to contextualize and simplify the community, right? And, and put it in a nice, easy to understand package uh, so that folks can absorb it quickly, right? The notion that we need to come and visit five, six, seven times over multiple years before we have enough understanding of the community to make a safe, intelligent decision to purchase. Well, not necessarily a bad thing is not necessarily true either. Um, the reality of it is, is that with a focused, streamlined event, such as the early education program, which takes me about three hours, it's an hour and a half presentation and an hour and a half of Q&A on the back end. Um, I cover most everything, right? I cover things that I don't care how long you rent for, you're probably not going to discover on your own because you don't know to ask the questions. So <clears throat> that's more or less where the sector system came from. It has nothing to do with the districts. Districts are for taxation purposes. They're for governance purposes. I believe there's 13 uh, districts. It's probably more than that now as the community expands the districts, uh, new districts come into existence as well. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Sectors are geographical spaces that I that I put together for navigational purposes and to distinguish uh, different errors of construction. Uh, I suppose it would be the easiest way for me to explain that. All right, moving on. Jerry and Linda's video, The Village's Newcomers. Yes, I'm familiar with them. Thank you, Brian. Brian Engelhart, yep. Uh, did a very, very good in-depth dig into their monthly expenses, and they ended up with a total budget of about 60000 annually, I believe. That sounds, that sounds really high. <laughs> really, really high. Um, I don't see how that could be possible. Maybe, maybe we just misstated, or maybe we're misremembering. Maybe we're misremembering. Uh, their video is the most in-depth guide into what you can expect cost of living in the villages that I found so far. Yes, I and I'm familiar with that video, Brian. Um, I didn't choose their video to do on Realtor Reacts because it was very lengthy. It was a very long video, and I didn't want to. I'm 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 struggling to keep the videos you know, under or around 30 minutes as it is. Um, most recently, I've more or less thrown the hat in on that, and we're just going to have to do an hour format. Um, but if I if I introduce a core video of 42 minutes, and I want to say that video was something like 42, 48 minutes, if I introduce a core video of 42 minutes, we're going to be here for two hours. You know, that's going to have to be a part one, part two type of video. Um, and so I just, I didn't want to do that. Um and I don't really want to get into a, a deep analysis because, like I said, every everyone really needs a specific analysis on their circumstances and the home selection that they're looking at. Is it good to get a relative idea? Can can some of the YouTube creators, you know, who live in the area, give you a rough idea? Sure, right. Kind of going back to what our cold dad said, you know, well, you know, twenty four to thirty two hundred. He said two thousand, but. $2,000, $3,000 a month, right? You can get a range. You can get an idea. Um, but when it comes time to make a decision, um, I still strongly recommend that we we invest the time in getting a specific one. This is why I do the uh, purchase outlook and contacts. Promo SM. Promo SM, I don't – you keep popping up. 
and you seem to keep popping up on my ad videos. And I don't know why. Are, are we trying to sell me a product? I'm not, I'm really not interested in, in whatever this is. So, uh, da, 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 Village Chief, Village Chief hit us back, said, thanks for the reaction, Chris. You're welcome, Village Chief. Um, Chief is great. I love Chief. I, I like all the, I like all the YouTube contributors and, and, and you know, Mr. Abbott and, and Jerry and Linda and, and we might, we might find uh, someone other than Robin because I don't want to, I don't want to invest a whole lot of time and I don't want to engage in the risk of having to contradict Robin on something and I, I don't want to do that. So I think this more or less concludes our roundtable discussion because um, these look like ones I've already discussed. What percentage of various homes are likely to be rentals? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I had already addressed these, and these are from a month ago. Okay, perfect. All right, well, hey, listen, nice short episode. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions, even you, Mr. McGowan. Um, you know, I don't mean to be snippy. Uh, I'm not trying to be snippy, but um, I've been doing this a very long time. And that's not to say is that I can't be wrong. I'm wrong often. Um, I like being wrong. It helps me to learn. Okay. Um, but uh, as far as I can tell, and I think really the, the, the qualifications part of your question was the thing that kind of kind of sparked my interest. I don't care about the meandering talking part. You know, it's or not interesting. That's, that's your opinion and you're welcome to it. Um, but this is YouTube. <laughs> there, are, there doesn't seem to really be any qualifications <laughs> necessary to share an opinion or a thought. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us uh, for this episode. Uh, I will see you next month uh, on the next roundtable. Oh, hold on. Wait just a second. Uh, how fortuitous I just mentioned uh, how much I enjoy being wrong and how I learn from it. Um, as I was editing the video, I noticed that while I was familiar with these comments and questions, um, I don't think I've actually addressed these. And I thought I did, but then I read this one right here uh, and realized that what I was thinking was... I should address these, um, and I meant to do it here, so we'll go ahead and jump back in real quick uh, before we depart. Um, so this here, uh, Village Chief had seen uh, the initial video there, um, and I think it was the one where he, he had bought a furnished home or a turnkey home, uh, and I kept messing up his, his name, his title. Um, we got that clarified in large part uh, due to this individual here, who I believe is a young lady, um, who was very kind to give me a thorough explanation um, as to what the, cor the correct pronunciation was and the reasoning behind it. Um, and so that was more or less what that conversation was there. Um, this was our cold ad. And our cold ad, the reason I thought I had already addressed this is because I remember reading this and I thought I did. Um, but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and do it again, if not for the first time. Uh, what percentage of various villas are likely to be rentals, assuming that there are more rentals in a newer or more southern village? Um, that when a when a this is this is in response to all these renters, which was episode four. Um, I believe that was Jerry and Linda doing an interview with a with a new resident. Um, It's, it, it's kind of difficult to throw a percentage on it because, you know, you're going to have villages that are going to be closer to town squares and the percentage is going to be higher there um, because there's going to be more investor activity in that location. But for a, a, a C-tier village, which would be a, a village kind of in between two town squares, um, your median was probably going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 percent initially okay um and then that's going to dissipate over time there's always going to be a percentage of villas whether it be courtyard or patio um that are going to be renters rentals um that product those products i should say lend themselves very nicely to that category 
uh, of the rental properties. Um, and really they were designed with that in mind to be part-time seasonal rental type properties. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. But the, the percentage is going to be higher when a, when a village is new. Um, and that's largely due to you just have you have a lot of eyeballs. Um, folks have risk mitigating things that they're doing where they're more inclined to purchase new, particularly when we're talking about investment, because the risk of reinvesting earned capital is very minimal uh, in a new home scenario, particularly with the uh, initial warranty provided. I want to say it's two years. Um, there are specifics that I think it's first, I think it's first year, pretty much everything is covered. And then the first two years, mechanicals are covered. Don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've looked into the new home warranties. Um, in my town, property owners are required to register a rental property, having it annually inspected and pay certain fees and taxes. Do any of the villages, CDD towns, or counties have similar registrations inspection requirements? I've never heard of a registration. So I'm going to say no. Inspection requirements? Nothing specific to being a rental property. There's a thing called renter's insurance that is probably going to have some type of, of prerequisites to secure. But that, if I remember, well, no, because the landlord would, the landlord would be, yeah. Um, but there's nothing on a, on a governmental level that I'm aware of that, that you need to interact with in terms of inspections um, as it pertains to having a rental property. Fees and taxes, nothing outside of earned income. I mean, you're going to pay taxes on rental revenues, but I'm not a tax expert, so I couldn't, I couldn't even really begin to, to illustrate what those implications may be. Um, you'd want to talk to your CPA uh, about that. Uh, I, might, I might, too, be interested in buying a villa that could be both used and rented out until I move south in a year or two. Yeah, yeah, pre-purchasing. Um, Pre-purchasing is a great strategy for for coming into the villages because you you get an anchor uh, home and it keeps pace with my market. Save the radical fluctuations of the recession and here most recently the COVID pandemic. Um, this is a great strategy because this market tends to outpace your origin market. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, your comment suggests many of the new villas or those built in the last couple of years would rent easily many months out of the year. Something to think about. I don't know what comments we derived that from. Um, and I don't know if I necessarily want to leave that as a standing impression. Your comments uh, may rent easily. They Okay, so during season, yes. right. We have a very seasonal market for renters in the villages. Um, January, February, March, April, April is kind of an extension, but January, February, March are what's known as season. And it's relatively easy to secure a quality tenant, uh, during that period of time. April is kind of a, a runoff. And then we go into May, which is an exodus month where all of my seasonal and, uh, seasonal renters, seasonal owners and seasonal renters tend to vacate the space. Um, June, July, August, September is my off season and rentals on villas are not as in demand. Um, typically folks who rent during that period of time are, are renting the larger products because their reasoning for renting is different than my seasonal folks. My seasonal folks are discovering the community and they are having a good time. They're here on vacation. Um, my summer renters are here making decisions and they tend to rent homes in alignment with the category of home that they're considering, right? So villas usually don't fall into this category because these folks tend to be looking more towards either part-time or full-time ownership. And so they're going to be in the bigger products. Uh, then you get into October, November, December. This is kind of a newer category. I would say for the last six, seven, eight years, um, preseason, right? We never used to have a preseason. 
And preseason here again, th these are folks that are very similar to your seasonal renter, but they're <clears throat> they're they're renting preseason because season rentals are too competitive. And they're having a hard time securing it, particularly if their strategy is to go year over year. Um, and so they will compromise and default themselves into a preseason rental, January, or, um, uh, October, November, December. But this gets a little tricky because November and December are also major holidays where, where family kind of comes into play and we want to be around family. So that's probably a... That's probably a better explanation of demand across product types across the year. Uh, I hope that, that contextualizes that a little better for you, our cold ad. Um, our cold ad, nice call to sack home. Okay, so this is Foxfield. Uh, this is a guard, this is a camellia. Uh, nice little house there. Uh, can you help us understand how the competitor market analysis is prepared if the VLS and MLS systems are not interconnected or if the MLS agent does not have complete access to the VLS data in history? Great question, our cold dad. Fantastic question. Um, this is one of those things that kind of flies under the radar, right? And really, it's, it's a major hang-up. Because neither party, whether it be MLS or VLS, have complete access to the inventory. Um, on the pre-owned side, which is where a uh, CMA would come into play, um, the two parties stand pretty equal. MLS has more or less taken the lead now, but there was a time for a very long time uh, where VLS had the advantage in terms of market share percentages. Um, you are hoping, and you're going to have to use a little experience, uh, provided that you have it. Um, if not, check with uh, your more experienced agents in the area. But uh, you're hoping that you're going to have enough inventory of the like to use as a base, right? Your comps, usually you want at least three. Um to to then start working through the interior exterior uh, adjustments comparables um in lieu of that the villages has like as property so let's say for example it's it's a let's use an example here let's say i have an alamanda okay an alamanda is a poured concrete structure that was released around 2009, 2010. Um, and it weighs in at about 1525 because it has the um, smaller floor to room uh, standard. Okay. And the Alamanda is modeled after the Amarillo, which you probably know as the Sunkiss today, um, or the Bougainvillea, which I believe is still in the designer series. Um, because she weighs in at 1525, and I'm talking under heat and air square footage here. I'm sorry. I, I tend to use my own logos or my own uh, lingo. Um, I can reasonably use a Jasmine. Uh, a Jasmine categorically is an entry-level designer. Also concrete. Um, Jasmines tend to be block versus poor concrete cement, but that really doesn't matter. Their square footage is approximate. Their category of home is approximate. If they're in the same geographical space within limits, within reasonable limits, and they have sold around the same period of time, um, usually 60 to 90 days is about as far back as you want to go because the village's market moves very fast. You don't want to go back six months um, if you can avoid it. Um, then that's, that's usually okay to do that. Um, but you're going to have to use some judgment on that. VLS doesn't have access to MLS inventory closes, pendings, anything like that. MLS doesn't have access to VLS. And so this also becomes an issue where you're trying to purchase a home, right? Because no matter who you're working with, you're only seeing half the inventory at a time. And this is kind of where that whole you need an MLS agent, you need a VLS agent thing comes from. And it's very true. Uh, nobody wants to consider half the inventory when you're making a decision. And... The, the the other part of this is market standings, right? You can you can more or less check your work 
when you're doing a CMA by looking at what your competitors are priced at in the category and more or less getting an idea of, am I close? Okay. You, you can have a little bit of play. The villages market is very tight knit because it's categorical and it's nature, right? You get a little bit of playroom, right? You could be off by five to seven, maybe $10,000 depending upon the category and you're still okay. You're still competitive in the marketplace. Um, let me just reread the question, make sure I answered it and it's, totality here. Can you help me understand how competitive management is prepared? Yeah, I think I've answered the question in its totality, right? Just a quick overview, right? CMAs are basically you pull three comps that are in the same geographical space inside the villages that you want to keep them in the same category of home if you can. Um, price per square foot doesn't really matter it really doesn't play in the villages the way that it does outside. So really it's about category of home and uh, time frame 60 to 90 days. If you can, the subject property is the property that you're doing the comparison analysis for. Okay. Um, you want to have that be the superior property. So when you're pulling comps, you kind of want, if you can, you kind of want to have those comps be inferior to the subject property. It's not always going to be a possibility. Sometimes you're going to pull comps that are superior to the subject property and you're going to have to make negative adjustments. The reasoning behind that is that you don't want to show up at a CMA presentation and then you have all these deductions and basically you're just pounding the seller over the head about how not great their home is uh, versus the ones that you pulled as comparables, right? But this is one of those, I've been doing this a long time, so I know better type things here. Uh, I think I answered that question pretty succinctly there. I, I hope so. If not, our cold dad, let me know and I'll, I'll expand on anything that I missed. Uh, private view, go, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confident. I apologize, Ian, to leave this. Okay, I'm positive that I did address these recently. Okay, now. Sorry, that was probably loud. Uh, now I believe we have reached the conclusion of the episode. Thanks so much for joining us for the roundtable. Um, this is a, this has been interesting, and hopefully we have more engagement. Hopefully I'm encouraging more engagement uh, with uh, with this show. So thanks again. Take care of yourself. Take care of others, and look forward to seeing you next month. Have a great one.